Okay, this is the April uh, SC Prime Community Meetup. And today um, we've got some fun stuff. And I think um, one of the things that ought to come through from this meeting today is that a lot of the work that we've been uh, focused on and putting in and, and really driving towards for a lot of time, um, years even in some cases, um, is finally starting to pay off. And, and it may not be completely obvious just yet. And partly that's because I know things that you don't, but partly it's because um, we're starting to just see the very first green shoots of the stuff that we're doing. And, um, you know, I, I talked with uh, some folks on the team the other day, and, and the way I described it is it's that situation where you have your hand out, you're blindfolded, and your hand is touching a surface, and it's rough, and you don't know exactly what it is, and it's kind of flat, but it has maybe a little curve to it, and you're trying to describe it to somebody and what you're touching, but you don't really know. And then when you take your blindfold off and move back and look at it, it's a big elephant. And that's kind of the situation we have right now. And, and um, because I'm always sort of visioning the future, I feel like I can see as much of the elephant as, as possible. And then part of the job is, is to describe the elephant to other people so that they can see it. And I think we're now coming into a place where everybody is being able to sort of start to see um, how this is going to go. Um, there are a few things that are happening right now that I think are really important to where we're headed. And I think they're going to be helpful, but I also think that people are going to misplay them or misunderstand them and, and you know, come up with ideas that are not maybe totally accurate. And what I mean by that is, you know, whether we like it or not, this whole crypto business, this whole blockchain side of things uh, is a slave to the Bitcoin four-year cycle. And the four-year cycle just hit a giant milestone on the 19th where um, the, the halving came off. The halving is, is where the blocks that are mined uh, are a certain number for a period of time, and then at a scheduled uh, blockchain rule, they cut in half. And it's an interesting way to do it. And of course, back when they, you know, when Satoshi envisioned uh, Bitcoin, you know, there wasn't really a lot of uh, experience or history or understanding of how this whole thing was going to turn out. So it made sense. And, you know, nobody could really have guessed how it played out, but the chart really just paints it very vividly in how the halving works. In our blockchain, and our blockchain is really kind of a Bitcoin uh, knockoff, 10-minute uh, block, same sort of thing. Um, we don't have a halving, right? Because in, in ours, there was a difficulty adjustment algorithm created that essentially um, there's a, a 0 0.001 coin uh, decline every single block and then over time um, you know it goes uh, very very much on a curve so that when we first started in 2018 it was 300 coins per block and now we're down to about 10 point I don't know three five or four nine or something like that but it's about 10 and at the very end of the inflation schedule the blockchain will be spitting out 10 total coins per block forever. And, you know, that's a very flat uh, sort of chart. And what I'll do here real quick is I'll just uh, bring that up so that we can talk about it vividly. So we're here, April 27th, 2024, and you can see how the curve has worked. I mean, way back here, you know, there were a lot of SCP, you know, being thrown off every block. And now every block is spitting out just a little over 10 SCP, so not very much. And if you go out into the future and look at like say 427 or around that part in 2025, so one year from now, um, you know, the, t the total supply will end up being uh, 56 million, whereas today it's 55.5 million. So it's 500 total SCP coins that'll be available a year from now. And, and so that flat emission. Now, here's what I've always kind of kept you know, 
uh, talking about, and I know that, you know, it gets a little bit, you know, I, I'm on a horse kick these days, so it's a dead horse and, and I get it, but I, I still stick to my guns on it because I think, I think I'm right on this point. Um, we are a blockchain project, a crypto project, and for whatever reason, we've never been afforded or accorded all the kinds of uh, things. We've been accorded a lot of the bad side of it, um, and we've you know, had to fight through a lot of the, the gnarly stuff, but we just haven't got the good side of it, right? So like, I, I just got upset the other day in our team meeting when somebody said, well, you know, it'll all change when we get storage. And I just, the next person that says that to me, I'm just gonna bonk them with a the bonk cat because it, it is just, why are we the only project in crypto that has to live to that standard? They're, they're literally every other project lives to the Bitcoin having standard of, valuations are tied towards you know um interest and and tokens and you know all of that sort of stuff but for some reason we are the only project in crypto that has to actually have provable use and then in that place then we're supposed to get something <laughs> i just first of all it's wrong it's not going to work that way um and at some point people are going to finally start uh, understanding that we do exist and we are here as a crypto project. And the reason why I talk, say it like that is because of this. This chart actually goes directly to that. Um, if you go back and you look at the Bitcoin chart, right? I mean, it's not hard to get an idea what that looks like. And so if you look at the Bitcoin chart over, you know, we'll do weekly or actually even we can do monthly and spread it out here, you know, the halvings are these orange bars, right? And so what happens is, is that after the halving, it just goes up like clockwork, right? And it's done it now for three cycles. So there's no real, you know, expectation that it's not gonna continue to do the same thing. And if you think about what's going on here, so what happens is, is the consensus miners, the people that are running the ASIC devices, and of course, back here in the early days, it was CPUs and then GPUs, but the people running the mining rigs essentially start out and back here it was like 50 coins per block. And so they were getting a ton of Bitcoins, right? And then at the halving, it went to 25, right? And so now the same amount of electricity was only pr producing half the amount of Bitcoin. So of course it makes sense that then the price needs to go up and, and it does. And then of course we move to this one, it goes from 25 down to 12.5 Bitcoins. And of course that's what happens. Um, to be frank about it, um, it should have happened here and it just hasn't. We, we are priced at about this point right back here. And yet the electricity to, uh, you know, validate this blockchain and to, to secure this blockchain is, is identical to what it was back then. I mean, it's, you know, pretty much the same hard cost to produce those coins. And now today when a miner stands up, they produce far less coins than they did back here. So, um, you know, the price should have followed this curve to some sort of uh, effect. And it just hasn't. I mean, it hasn't done it at all. It's gone up a little bit, but not much. And and um, so to my way of thinking, all the people that say, well, price will go up when there's storage, I just look at them cross-eyed and say, do you even know what you're involved in? Because that's not this at all. This is about scarcity and supply emissions and so forth. And again, I don't have a dog in this fight, by the way. I don't Frankly, I don't care what the price is because I, when I go out to buy SCP to put into storage contracts, it doesn't matter if they're worth a dollar, if they're worth one cent, or if they're worth you know five thousand um, dollars, because the price adjust is adjusts based on U.S. dollar values in terms of how much storage is able to be purchased with a token. So um, at the end of the day, I ascribe it as everybody knows, to all the things that happened to us in the first couple of years of the project. And I'm not going to rehash them right now because I know you guys hate the victim card. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there was a very effective campaign put on us and, and ultimately caused uh, us to not be able to do a number of things that would have probably got us out into the public sphere a lot better than we are right now. And so the good news about that is, is that you always get second chances in life. And uh, we're coming up on several of those right now. And it, it appears that our adversaries have finally all given up and walked away. And, and, and much has changed over in the uh, environment where they came from. So 
I don't think they have the same motivation even that they had back then. Um, but to, to, to give an example, by the way, that project that we came, all came out of has a half a billion dollar valuation right now. And it's pretty humorous because um, they lost all their storage, right? You know, in the last bear market, which they were doing on a cycle, you know, what would happen is, is that, you know, the, the bull cycle will come along and people would stand up providers, and they'd get some storage on there. And then the bear market would come, they'd lose a bunch of providers and a bunch of the storage would go away. And, and, and that's where they were at. And what they did um, is they decided to do kind of what everybody else is doing, including us, is put some test data on their network. And I find it odd because <laughs> they ran it up to exactly the same amount of storage use that we have on our network. I don't know why. I mean, it's a weird thing, but um, that's where they're at. And they're worth a half a billion dollars. You know, we're, we're worth 10 million on a good day and they're worth a half a billion. And, you know, I can't, I'm not gonna convince any of you people here that we ought to be priced differently. I, I get that. That's ship sailed probably two years ago. Um, you guys are not the, the audience. The audience are all the other people out there that are gonna come in and look at this and say, what the heck? How, how has this been here like this? And nobody knows about it. And the price is here. <laughs> They're gonna look at that and, and say whatever. And so uh, the reason why I bring that up and why I start with this is because this is a major uh, thing that's about to happen. And I'm gonna explain it in as much detail as I can without tipping the final hand on it, which is who the partner is and what the, 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 the thing is. But I will give you as much as I can give um, to make sure that everybody is up to speed and, and sort of understands what's coming. So I've talked about this in the channels, but when we decided to do this, we did it because this whole ASIC mining thing um, was being sort of, there, there was a, a, a disturbance in the force on this other project in sort of how they, uh, you know, decided to roll out ASICs uh, and take over. Back then, their big concern in 2017 was is that Asian GPU farms were essentially controlling everything. They that that was where all the hash rate was coming from, and you know they felt insecure because of that. And so the idea was is that they would you know roll out ASIC mining, uh, and then they went a step further and said, and oh hey, why don't we just design our own ASICs, which proved to be sort of a a, a bad decision, but um, that's what they did. And then what happened is, is about, I don't know, three or four months after they announced that they were going to create their own ASIC, then, you know, the rest of the industry came along. And then by April of the next year, which was just after the, the crypto bull uh, blow off top, a company called InnoSilicon showed up and with a, a high efficiency miner, I mean, it blew everything out of the water and it made their model just look silly. And quickly ballooned up to almost 90 petahash of hash rate. It was crazy. It was really obvious that they had blown out a number of units off of these these wafers. I don't know how many wafers they printed, but um, there were as much as 16,000 miners, I think, when we really tallied it all up, and it's probably even a little bit higher than that. So it was a crazy thing. I mean, they just went, they went overboard on it. And then, of course, that led that project to finally do the hard fork to, to kick them off. And when they kicked them off, it looked like a really good opportunity for us to step in and say, well, we don't mind. We'll take that hash rate. You know, it's it's, it's a lot of hash rate and it's good and we'll, we'll use it. But some stuff happened and it didn't play out that way. We didn't get that hash rate. You know, it, it, it went to a fake fork and we got, you know, one to two pet of hash. And that's about all we ever got the whole rest of the way. So, and 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 I've talked actually directly to the CEO of InnoSilicon and, and you know, they just waffled and said, yeah, we don't, we don't really support anybody. You know, we, we support everybody. And, you know, what ended up happening that was the deal breaker here for us was that when the coin did start to move in December, November, uh, October of 21, um, what ended up happening was the hash rate started moving directly with it. And we went all the way up to about 20 petahash which is a lot of miners, right? And um, it showed really clearly everything that I'd been saying all along, which is that there are a bunch of these things sitting in Chinese warehouses 
that the people in America that were trying to gain an upper hand on the, the, the supply and so forth, and even the guys in Europe and so forth, really didn't have a clue and didn't have much of a uh, in, ingress to any of that, you know, uh, supply. And that these, you know, whoever owned them over there could just turn them on at a moment's notice and take over the chain. So, I mean, it is what it is. And we ultimately decided we had to fork away from it. Um, I think I've said this a few times, but we made a mistake and we forked away to the SIA chain thinking that, you know, we, not necessarily that we would be immediately the dominant, um, you know, entity, but we felt like there was enough overhang of miners and different manufacturers out there and that we could get, you know, new units from Gold Shell and, and ultimately um, it just felt like a ripe situation where we could step in and get a good solid hash rate um, if not to, you know, be dominant, at least to rival. And then over time, I felt like if we did what we are doing right now, which is having a better network than them, having a better uh, vision, having a better software, having a better team, having, you know, better everything except for not being on all these exchanges, um, that we would ultimately gain our hash rate. And it just hasn't worked that way. Not at all. Not at all. We haven't, in fact, our hash rate went almost to zero. <laughs> and now we're in this place where it's completely and totally insecure and it just can't work. And, and um, I don't, you know, I, I got no explanation for it other than to say that um, the faithful that are still here with us, by and large, have locked into an idea that's fallacious. And I've said it and I'll continue to harp on it. Um, that our valuation ought to be tied only to storage and everybody else can be tied to something else. And because of that, you know, we've almost come to the brink of failure. So the deal is, is that um, we had to kind of find a better answer. And our first uh, whack at that uh, was to essentially say, well, look, we, we know that ultimately running our own L1 is probably not something we want to do. And back in 2018, when we started this thing, you have to understand that crypto projects didn't look the way they look today, right? It was not really clear that we would be in the world we're in today, right? Back then, you know, the only thing on Ethereum was CryptoKitties, you know, that mattered. I mean, punks were out there and all that stuff, but the only thing that had any use was CryptoKitties. And the only thing that really, you know, validated Ethereum was that a bunch of projects used it as a vehicle uh, to ingress a ton of capital in 2016 and 2017 into these ICOs. And then, of course, you know, then the SEC got involved and started prosecuting a bunch of people on that and still hasn't adjudicated yet whether that's uh, uh, a security or not. It's But what we learned, you know, along the way after DeFi summer in 2019, 2020, um, was that, you know, the world was going to migrate into this place where, Obviously, Bitcoin was never going to be the, the underlying core blockchain for all these applications. Um, but whether Ethereum would or wouldn't wasn't totally clear, but then it started to take its role. And then after Ethereum, a bunch of people said, OK, well, look, let's you know keep working on our thing. And there's, you know, there's about 10 or 15 L1s out there that thought that they would, you know, rise up to be the thing. And, you know, they most of them haven't really succeeded to any great degree. But a few have come up that really did have a lot of potential. AVAX is one, uh, Solana is one. You know, there's a couple of new ones out there that are talking uh, loudly about performance and taking things a different direction. So who knows what it'll look like in another two or three years. In our case, what we did is we looked at a few things that were going on. We looked at uh, people like Helium, who we follow a lot. Uh, we looked at a few other uh, technology things in the Solana blockchain, super rapid blocks, um, you know, uh, very inexpensive transaction costs, um, CNFTs, which are really a great way to address things that, that allow you to mint uh, an overwhelming number of NFTs for an almost, you know, nothing cost. So there was just a lot of functionality built into Solana that made it make a lot of sense to us. And, you know, then we could migrate there and lose this security thing of these fickle ASIC miners, you know, who, who um, decided that we weren't valued high enough to mine our coin. So that was our plan, right? And then, of course, as we got into this year, um, we, we were still on track. We started uh, uh, migrating over, transporting over tokens. 
And, you know, road mapping was coming this summer to begin the process of, you know, building out the network. And then ultimately we would create some sort of proof of replication or proof of storage or proof of something like that for our own sort of uh, staking and, you know, our own validation. And then ultimately, you know, we would cut over and, and this blockchain would go its own way and do whatever it did. Um, but then Solana got into a place where it was really clear that, you know, networking was still a bit of a challenge under load. And they hit that because, you know, meme coins exploded on their network over the last three months. And now they're in the process of fixing it and cleaning it up and getting it out there. The, the chain really didn't go down during all of this. So it was really actually a very good test. And I think ultimately what you're seeing is, is that they are getting the fixes in place and it's going to harden the network. And um, could we continue and still do this by the end of the year? Yeah, probably. But, you know, look, I don't I don't really want to onboard real professional enterprise grade storage for customers and then wind up having to explain, you know, that Joe Bowden you know, brought the whole network down. Right. Um, it's just not a thing. So we said this all along that we really was were hoping you know for these things to firm up and really you know deliver uh you know plumbing so that we could you know entrust this kind of security to that layer of our stack so the good there's good news about that because we're not deviating from it we're still going there but what i've done is sort of transition the roadmap so that it's actually elongated about one year um, and I would expect that what we were talking about doing by the end of 24 will be what we'll end up doing by the end of 25. And then in that interim period, what we'll do is we will buttress and, you know, make this thing more robust on this side. And, you know, that leaves us time. We might, we might make another change between now and then. We might come to a different conclusion. You know, Filecoin, they built their own uh, FBM, their own virtual, you know, machine, and similar to like Ethereum, because I think partly they saw, well, we can't be tied to Ethereum and those kinds of costs, and we don't want to go on to an L2. So they built their own, right? And I think you're going to see more of that where people that do want to continue to run their own L1s um, will ultimately build their own, uh, you know, state machines and and then, you know, build out ecosystems on that. And that's always a possibility here, right? If we get, you know, recognition and funding and direction and the ability to increase our vision scope significantly, it's really possible that we could look at it and say, well, let's do our own SCP VM and, you know, turn this into an ecosystem and, you know, really drive hard on because our L1's pretty decent and, and has some good features, even though it has some some negatives attached to it still too. Um, that's a possibility. It's not, you know, a majority possibility right now. It's clearly a m minority, but potentially we could do that. So um, that's the thing. And so that's where we're at. So then you have to pivot back to saying, okay, well, what are you going to do about the blockchain today? I mean, what about mining? Because this sucks and it's not going to work. Um, what are you going to do? And, you know, Life is weird, right? I mean, you know, about the same time we were really starting to wonder what we were going to do, that's when I got uh, somebody touched me on the shoulder and said, hey, wonder if you're interested in having a conversation about this. And, you know, w w one of the things that's pretty uh, challenging about this whole environment we're in, and, you know, I, I kind of hate it about myself, but I've, I've become pretty jaded uh you know, to any comms that, that I don't instantly recognize. Um, because w what you learn is, as somebody working as, on a team in a project, um, literally 99.44% of the contacts that you get are going to be some sort of a scam. And, you know, I've come to a point where I've just, you know, almost not even bothered to take the time to validate people anymore, because quite frankly, I know that they're not going to prove out to be who they are, who they say they are, or if they are, um, they have a motivation that isn't really, you know, helpful to us. Um, but in this case, it, it kind of tweaked me because, you know, <laughs> it did look legit. So I went ahead and, and validated it by, you know, doing some work with email back and forth and, and verifying that they actually were with the corporation that they uh, represented themselves as. 
And, you know, then they set up a Discord and invited me in, and there were about five or six people from their side there. And I think none of them speak English except for one person, so it was all them translating with Google, I imagine, and um, or Baidu or whatever it is they use in their, their part of the, the world. Um, and the deal there is is we began this discussion, and the discussion was pretty interesting. Um, first of all, w what, what came up is they said, so... Um, we, we would like to know what your plans are via proof of work. And I said, well, you know, I mean, we're going to keep it running for a while, but we're going to ultimately transition over to proof of stake and proof of whatever um, on another L1. Right now we've targeted Solana for that. And I said, well, is there a chance that you'd consider something else? And, and I said, okay, well, tell, tell me what you're talking about. And what happened here, and I'll be directly honest about this because, you know, I don't want to misrepresent and I never do. Um, the deal is, is that um, another project had this algorithm and got under the spell. Um, it's interesting because um, the leader of the project we came out of was somewhat involved in this process. Uh, you know, had talked to them and and so forth. But they they had uh, they had a they were in the bear market and they had a big downward chart and their whole you know conspiracy mind uh, because in this business it's almost impossible not to be conspiracy minded um you know was that these asic uh farms had total centralized control over their blockchain and you know had their thumb on the price and blah 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 and so they ultimately made a decision that they were going to hard fork off and make their their token asic resistant they still do proof of work they also do proof of stake it's a combined algo and and um, they moved off to a GPU uh, min mineable uh, environment. In, in fact, I even think you can mine with CPUs productively, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, what had happened was miners had reached a certain plateau in, in hash rate on that algorithm. And, you know, uh, this co corporation had come out with a brand new miner. And it was... I don't know exactly. I haven't read the documents on it, um, but I assume it was like going from like five NM down to three or something like that. But what ended up happening is, is that the hash rates, uh, you know, ballooned uh, one and a half times over the highest value miner that was on the the the, the public um, at the time. So it was a high efficiency miner. Typically, the miners at this kind of uh, uh, hash rate tend to retail first and foremost at the you know ten to thirteen thousand dollar range and so i suspect that's what they were planning to launch these at when they were going to launch and then right as they were ready to launch these miners they, they, they had not shipped any units they'd sent out something like less than 100 to partners um that's when the project said no we're going to fork them off and so they had this warehouse and you know it it was a, a benchmark that about $10 million to print a wafer uh, back in the day. I don't know how many ultimately uh, wafers need to be produced in order to um, create uh, the, the, the number that they currently have in their warehouse, but um, you can expect that they have a pretty significant sunk cost into these units that they just left in their warehouse. And of course, when they launched them, it was the, the tail end of the bull market last time around. So, um, you know, they weren't going to go ahead and try and do anything with them in the bear market. So they showed up and started to move them in the uh, in this bull market. And so when they looked around and they did a lot of research, as you would, because, you know, we're talking about, um, you know, some $10 million or more. Um, they looked to all the projects they potentially could work with and they landed on us. And I think that's really a very powerful thing. I mean, it's, you know, I, we're the right ones. We're the ones they're supposed to have landed on, and they did. And th there's no other project out there that makes as much sense as our project does for this specific unit, um, partly because the people here have devalued the the, the coins <laughs> so much, and partly because um, the, the way we currently exist right now with a, a very low hash rate and you know the opportunity is just golden right here it's it's just a, a golden path and so um we got to talking about a partnership and essentially uh the plan here is is that this miner will launch over the next uh, one to three weeks 
we're going to change the algorithm uh, and, you know, ship a new SPD here very shortly within the next probably one to two weeks. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some changes we're proposing and that may even end up in web wallet voting. Um, but the, the deal there is, is that we're going to change uh, this mining algorithm, get it out there. And the first uh, iteration of the algorithm or the uh, consensus is, is that it will be a, a dual algo uh, capability. So you'll be able to continue to use your current miners, even though there's not that many of you still mining. Um, for some period of time, whether it's like 30 or 60 days. And then what we'll do is a week before it happens is we'll discuss and determine whether we got enough hash rate in order to let it happen. And if we don't, then we might have to do another hard fork at that point in order to ensure that, you know, we, we get the hash rate that we're supposed to have. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because our partner has talked about significant, you know, opportunities. One is they're going to do some pre-sales into our community. Um, they want to see you guys get, you know, a hold of these units before everybody else, which is really great, you know. Um, ultimately, industrial miners will pile into this thing. So, you know, it is what it is. Asian farms, in fact, it's quite likely our partner will end up mining some of these because that's just how that works. Um, but you guys will get a shot, and that's really a good thing. And so um, that's coming down the pike. Um, what will end up happening then is... Um, we will do a bunch of co-branded marketing with them. I was looking at their Twitter account the other day. It's well over 100,000 follows. So, um, you know, we're 5,000 on, on the SC Prime account. So um, we are going to get exposed rapidly to a lot of people in crypto uh, via this relationship. And they're going to do a number of things. Giveaways, they're going to pay to get people like Vosscoin to do reviews to get all of the, the Red Panda or whoever they end up using. I don't know who they prefer, but um, we'll see a number of those kinds of reviews out there. And, you know, everybody's going to say the same thing. And they're going to they're gonna ask why the coin is priced so low. Why, why did we never get any kind of a, a liftoff on our coin? And, you know, there will be some discussions about that and people will say whatever they want to say and it'll be whatever it will be. But um, what used to happen with ASIC introductions is quite likely to happen here and that the price uh, will begin to move in concert with the expectation ultimately uh, to allow enough of these miners to show up into validating our blockchain that we find ourselves having the security we never had. Um, so that's, you know, really the situation. So I think it's a powerful thing. Now, look, I'm not naive. In two years, you know, we'll put on our conspiracy hats again because the bear market will be back. And, you know, we'll be crying about how China owns our hash <laughs> rate and we're not secure and blah, 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 because, you know, that's just how the game works. But I don't think it's going to be quite as bad as that because one of the things is, is that this uh, partner seems to have learned a lot of lessons over time. Um, and, you know, um, back in the day, the big thing with Saya was is that you know manufacturers wouldn't talk directly to them that they couldn't get any direct information well this manufacturer actually told me how many units are sitting in the warehouse so you know it's it's been a very productive discussion and i think i think ultimately it's going to be really good okay so that's that um what's going to end up happening by the way is uh we're going to launch this consensus uh but a suggestion came up and, you know, I resisted it at first, but then I kind of started thinking about it. Now I'm putting some energy into it and I think there's some vitamins behind it. And the first suggestion was, well, why don't we, you know, just restart uh, the inflation schedule, right? Why don't we, why don't we just inflate the token so that there's another 300 coins starting on the block? you know, after the fork, and then it just keeps declining again. And then ultimately we end up with about 110 million instead of 55 million. And I don't, you know, I, 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 I don't like that. It's not a great thing because, you know, not, nothing good ever came from just printing money. Um, but at the same time, if the coins are 10, the price of SCP is going to have to balloon up to some insane, absurd number to make real good secure mining possible on our blockchain. 
right? I hate to say it, you know, and, and the, you know, just picture that horse and me beating it over and over and over again. Um, you know, we did this to ourselves. This, this, this crap about how we have to have storage to get any value here. It, it, you know, to me, I think the thing that really bothers me the most about that is, is what it says is, you know, your team doesn't matter. The work you've done doesn't matter. You know, we don't care that you've done something really cool. Um, you know, because until you prove that it works, um, even though I can fire it up myself and prove that it works, right? Until you prove that it works to me by getting some multiple growth, you know, like Amazon, then you're not worth anything. You're worthless. And that that's that's hard, you know, that that's hard for us to have to accept that. And, you know, I look at it and I say, it's okay. We'll we'll get through it. We'll keep grinding and we will end up getting through it. It's unfortunate that this is the trial that we had to, to, to take, but it is the trial. So um, what we're thinking about then is how do we do this then to make mining profitable at 10, you know, SCP per block? Um, because I don't know how to get the coin up to, to $12 a coin, to be frank. I've, I've tried job owning it up for you guys. I've tried, you know, various other things. And every time I, we do it, our stakeholders just jump in and say, nope. You're not getting any value here. Um, so, you know, 10 probably doesn't work. 300 doesn't work either, though, because, you know, then you got this guy who's studiously worked his whole life, you know, mowing lawns or whatever, you know, and somehow accumulated some crazy percentage of the supply because he, he believes that this is going to be his, you know, legacy, you know, wealth creator. Um, and I applaud him for that, um, you know, going to be pretty disheartened to realize that his whole stake just got diluted by 50%, right? So so that's not a thing. Although, to be frank, you know, if the price does, you know, go up significantly over this whole thing, then that dilution becomes a lot, you know, less um, untasteful, right? I mean, obviously, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take much, right? You'd only have to double the coin value for, <laughs> you know, a 50% dilution to actually be the same. But of course, in his mind, he's thinking the coin's going to go up there anyway, one way or the other. So, you know, um, saying 40 cents is all we need in order to, to double the supply is probably disingenuous. So then the idea came up, well, why don't you do like 150 and drop drop it down from there? And, you know, just talking about that, yeah, okay, maybe. But even that started to seem pretty, you know, big. So... Now we're kind of looking at it and saying, you know, maybe a 5x change where, you know, the emission schedule, once the fork comes into play, starts at 50 per block. And maybe it goes 50 per block down to, instead of 10 going forward, it goes down to 20 uh, uh, coins per block. It wouldn't change the inflation all that much, um, but it would actually make it productive to keep mining for a couple of years on here and not feel like... Um, the coin price had to be $48 before, you know, it made sense to keep a lot of hash rate protecting this blockchain. So that's kind of what we're thinking. And then a new idea sprung up, which was, well, you know, if you're going to go 5x, there's a better answer where we don't have to actually change the supply emission at all. We'll just leave it what it is right now. And if you look at that pink curve that's going out there, what if we just compressed it, right? We run 10 minute blocks right now. What if we did it so that we were um, only running two minute blocks on average, right? So we were getting five blocks for every one. That would work too. So we're looking at that and we're going to make some kind of a decision on that here in the next couple of days. And then we'll probably put it into the web wallet as a vote. Let's, uh, in case you haven't uh, seen this, in the new web wallet uh, and in this last go round, there was a thing called vote that got put in there. And in this case, um, well, it should be eligible to vote, actually. It's tied to an examiner. Um, but in any case, there's no vote There's no vote active right now. When there's an active vote, it shows up here, and you choose what you want to do, and it sends a really tiny, I think it's one hasting, uh, you know, uh, amount of uh, tokens, but it's tied to being a storage provider. You have to be a legitimate licensed storage provider because those are the constituent stakeholders in our network can't vote just because you're a, a shareholder, for instance, in the corp. You can't vote because you're a, an ASIC miner. You have to have an active role in maintaining this network from a storage provider 
uh, standpoint, and then you can vote on things relative to the project. And that's what will happen here. I asked our devs today to um, prepare for that because we'll we'll put that together. I'm leaning towards the increase the block speed because I think there's a lot of value to that anyway. I think 10 minute blocks has really proved to be sometimes a little challenging. Um, if we could get more blocks passing through, I think that it, it will help us out uh, from a growth perspective and everything in general. So that's where this will show up. So these $13,000 miners, are, are they going to sell for $13,000? Well, no, of course not. They're not. Um, they don't have to, you know. From, from the manufacturer's standpoint, they're saying, well, you know, th this is money we've already spent. It's been five years now, and it's these are four years or however long it's been. Um, and, you know, they're just happy to get some of their money back, right? So um, the first price that they told me I thought was a little bit low. <laughs> so I, I assumed that they were going to come back with a second price at, at some point. They started out by saying they were... They might put them out there at fourteen hundred bucks, but um, I think ultimately they're going to start them out at two thousand um, dollars, which is really a nice price. I mean, it's a great price. And ultimately, if we get some coupons and some pre-sale numbers for you guys, there could be some real, you know, discounting going on and and some early ability. And my gut is is that they won't sell them all, you know, at the beginning. They won't even attempt to. They'll probably sell a lot though. Um, but they'll probably have batches because that's how they operate. You know, they, they run a batch, then they go out of stock for a while. They let that get absorbed. They let the coin do what it's got to do. And then they bring another batch to the table and they do that. So I expect that that's going to be the situation that we'll have here. I'm really high on this. I, th I think it's going to be great. And I, I, I've been really uh, impressed with the way that they've handled the business with us to a, to a degree. I've, I've dealt with Chinese uh, business folks over time and, it's not always easy, right? You, you never really know what you're going to get. And, and um, I think things have been pretty good. So anyway, that's the story there. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to cover these two things really quickly because the last thing I want to cover is the, the uh, another fairly large piece. But um, point system, um, our developer, Renat, has actually uh, completed the base work on getting points together. He's, he's pulling down all of the uh, LP right now currently on... Orca and working on Radium to, to get that backfilled. Uh, we will add Meteora as we start to really get that um, uh, pool, you know, blown up. Pools have been a, I won't even call them a mixed blessing. They've been a bit a real challenge for us because of the way the market kind of melted down right when we started doing our, our stuff, you know. Um, so so anyway, the, uh, um, the points uh, calculation stuff is is there right now for LPs. Um, the next step is is uh, getting our front ender to to move into the console and to build a, le a leaderboard, a pretty leaderboard around the points, so that you can actually look at the point system and see where you are right now on the leaderboard to know where what you can expect out of the uh, upcoming you know distributions, um, and then ultimately. Um, as we kind of go forward, we will begin to add additional things that can earn points. To begin with, like I said, it'll just be LP first. You won't be able to cash them out into anything right off the bat at first. What will end up happening is the first uh, distributions will come out of those, um, you know, tokens that were sent across originally in that term, quote unquote, airdrop. But uh, six months and 12 months from, I think it was April 1st. But um, that's what we're looking at as far as that goes. Um, what we expect points to do, though, point, points have gotten kind of like dragged a little bit recently, but in our case, they make a ton of sense because points actually can be uh, applied to putting storage on the network. So like I've got a partner right now who's, you know, finally kind of getting around to the place where they are starting to play around and onboard um, onto a real relayer. And, and um, I think what they're seeing is they're seeing the performance, you know, is really good. And ultimately what's going to end up happening is they see how easy um, it is to, to deploy on this thing. And, you know, the costing mechanism that's in place and the ability to cut their costs over the long term. We'll put things into the, the point store so that like, you know, if they hit 100 terabytes, of uh, uploads, they will get, you know, some kind of a, a multiplier or a bonus or whatever. And then there will be new levels. As they hit new levels, they'll keep unlocking achievements. And so um, those achievements will allow them to have very much 
uh, a, a, a overall lowering of TCO, total cost of ownership, over time. Um, like, for instance, you know, they could get a bunch of points for uploading storage and then turn around and use the points to buy licenses, right? And then as they buy licenses, they could take their customers who are using the storage that they're selling, right? And they could say to the customer, well, look, stand up on an examiner at your facility. Here, we'll put the license on here. We're going to split the revenues with you or they'll come up with their own model. I don't know what it'll be, but they'll, they'll have this thing. And so over the course of the next two or three years, I'm kind of guessing they're going to institute some two or three or 400 miners that are not currently in existence in their own home country so that ultimately when they do a provider set, you know, 60% of their provider set is all their guys, right? So they've built their own virtual private data center and in that virtual private data center, it's all their own constituents. So it's a very powerful virtuous circle for them that ultimately over time could turn around and end up bringing the cost of storage down because other people will also be using their miners right uh, up in that part of the world and ultimately um that tco number just trends and trends and trends downward so points are going to be very valuable for that kind of thing the other things that you can earn points for obviously would be like buying licenses or you know doing things along those lines um, you know, storage providers currently get paid incentives every month, but that's a real manual process and not long for the world because ultimately that will ultimately go to uh, a points award. And then on the other side of it, the points store will turn around and include storage, miners, licenses, uh, tokens, and merch, right? So, you know, you'll have this full, you know, panoply of things that you can purchase using those points. Some people will just convert them directly into D2X or SCP or storage credit. Some people will, you know, go across the spectrum. Um, you know, it's just, uh, uh, you know, going to be an optionality that you'll have as somebody in our ecosystem. And we're really close on it. You know, it's not far off that we'll have that store in place and ready to roll. So that's that. <clears throat> I talked a little bit about the roadmap changes. You know, at this point, Solana is still the thing. Could change, but, you know, at this point, it's still the thing. And what I think will end up happening is, is as we start to build out a parallel network um, next year over there, you know, um, both will continue operational. And even if we put that network into production, this one will obviously still uh, maintain as the, 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 the major network or the bigger network or whatever you want to call it um, in order to support the ecosystem that we've currently built. Okay, so that's that. I guess I'll uh, ask if there's any questions on any of that in the chat real quick before I get into the next piece. Yeah, people that purchased uh, box twos are going to get something. I don't know what it is. I, I I led people, I guess, astray thinking that they were going to get some big reward for it. But look, the fact of the matter is, is you probably ROI'd a unit if you bought one for this chain. And more importantly, it's not like you're getting bricked, right? It's not like you have an in a silicon S11 that isn't going to have a network that you can go to the network that actually supports them, that has a real value. So I don't even know why you're mining our thing with them, by the way, right now. The price is so bad that why would you, right? Mine Saya. I think the one Mosquito always says it. I mine Saya, I sell it instantly. He probably doesn't, by the way. He probably keeps a half bag over there for Moon and, you know, sells half of it for SCP, hoping for even greater Moon. But um, anyway... So there will be coupons definitely or something there and 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 there will be some kind of a bonus potentially for people who bought box twos just for this, you know, application and can show me a receipt or or whatever. Okay, uh, the other thing I want to cover here real quick is this. Um, so our dev has been hard at work on this for uh, quite some time, actually. Um, what we are about to do is roll out what is really fourth generation. I, I thought back about it. We had a very early original uh, XM UI that came out in 21. And then we did an almost uh, immediate update in late 21 and then had kind of this newer, you know, console looking thing. And then we got another update that really kind of evolutionized that. And then the thing is, is that was all built in React and our, you know, current front ender. We ended up having to let our React guy go. Um, our current front ender is primarily focused in, in Vue as a framework. Uh, and um, so what happened was 
we had interfaces that he worked on that looked a certain way, and we had interfaces that the other dev worked on looked kind of a little different. They were close in color schema and so forth, but they just didn't have the consistency that we really wanted. And so now, uh, with this upgrade to um, the new uh, framework, uh, we've got a complete refactor of everything as well. So um, it looks, first of all, like everything else, right? It, it it looks like the web wallet. It looks like console. It looks like everything that you see. It looks like the relayer. So it's starting to look like a unified product family across the board, which I think is really, really powerful. Um, and so one of the biggest problems that we've always had with this UI, and I, and I knew it almost immediately, and we didn't really solve it. We should have solved it two years ago, but we didn't. And it's really hurt us. It's hurt us badly. And I think it's partly responsible, by the way, for why the coin price has never really done what it's supposed to have done. Um, people that have an examiner, you know, would look at this front screen, and it was called financials, and, you know, they'd see a number up here, but that number was never really clean. And you couldn't really get a sense of how much you'd actually earned. But you looked at the number and it was what it was. And then you'd say, well, how, how do I know how much I earned last month? And, you know, somebody said, well, you had to keep track of your wallet. It's the only way to do it. And because of the way our state channel contracts work, it just really was not on chain. And so it was really kind of ugly, but worse than that, right? And let me do this because I, I should have thought this through actually and, and had one of these up on my screen, but pull one of these up and see what we get. Hopefully I can grab one of your guys' units here along the way. I'll just grab one at random. So the old stats page, right, would come up. Um, and the deal was is that um, you would have to come down into this little column in the lower left-hand corner to actually see the incentives. And if you remember back in 2021, so so what had happened was in 2021, you know, we only had like 300 providers on the network and the 300 providers were probably in 220 individual community members' hands. And the, the, the situation was that in order to kind of keep the network hanging, even though, you know, the coin price was so low, um, what we had to do was, is we had to provide some sort of incentive to keep them around. So we had a very lucrative incentive back then, and we, we rewarded not only for used storage, but also capacity. And so they were making a ton, right? And then a guy came along and built this calculator, right? And the calculator was not clear enough that what was going on there with incentives. And because of it, that allowed a couple of YouTubers to run with scissors. And they said, look at this. If you fill one of these miners up, you're going to make a Lambo every week. And it's just crazy. And of course, that caused a bunch of people to come flying in. And, you know, look, if people feel like they were cheated back then, I don't have anything to say about that. But there was a, um, a clear understanding from us about what was going on. And we actually had to wrestle with, well, how are we going to deal now with all of these incentives because this incentive program was never meant to be this for the ongoing long term because what we were doing at that point was we were paying something like four dollars a month in storage costs right but we were paying some crazy incredible like 32 dollars in incentives per terabyte right and that's why the the the, the youtubers were able to, to to run so hard with it because it was like holy cow th you know you're making all this money well how can we go out and sell storage against Wasabi, you know, at, at seven to 10 bucks a terabyte if we're having to pay the network something like $40 a terabyte, you know, and that just doesn't, it doesn't work. But like we've always done, we tried to be as fair as possible. And so we said, look, we'll put it on a gradation so that you don't lose it immediately. It'll go down in, in, in number over time and then ultimately get to where it's supposed to be. And so what ended up happening is, is over 2022, as the coin price of crypto in general started really cratering in the bear market, um, people were accruing a lot of SCPs in terms of incentives and, and storage rent, even though they weren't getting a lot of storage, right? And so, you know, that was fine and, and, and dandy. We had budgeted about one to two million SCP to go out in these rebates that we had on all these miners that were sold. 
And that's just not what happened. Once the coin price got sunk down to 99% below the at the high, it was right in front of all of those big rebates getting paid out. And so you guys all got huge, huge numbers of SCP and it bankrupted us. We ran out, we got broke. And you know, it, it, it wrecked almost everything that we had in planning. So now everybody's in the community is just sitting out there on this big stash of, of tokens. And if you've converted them to D2X, you've got that. And if, if you kept them in SCP, you got that, but you've got these big amounts that people are telling you can't go up in value until there's, you know, exabytes of storage on the network, which again is stupid and silly and wrong. Um, and we're going to prove that this year, by the way. But um, at the end of the day, um, that whole incentive architecture that lives out there was predicated first on this number here, which was the last month incentives and current month incentives that you couldn't actually look at. So what you had was, you had all these people showing up in the Discord from time to time saying, hey, I haven't paid attention, but you know, I'm running this thing and I'm making, it looks like about 48 cents a day. How can this actually work? It doesn't work. I'm gonna shut it off and this sucks and you guys lied to us. And, you know, the first thing we had to say is, well, no, I mean, it's not right. You, you got storage rent, which is hard to show you in the current UI. And then also, if you go over here to the uh, stats page, you'll be able to see the incentives that we paid you, which was significantly higher than your rent. So you made quite a bit more than 48 cents per day. And then finally, if you go to the rebates thing, you'll see that you made quite a bit of tokens. And so... Almost everybody that has a 64 terabyte unit that did what they were supposed to do, and I don't know, let's, this guy isn't, this guy isn't a good example of it. I'm not going to go search for one, but what I tend to do is I go in here and I turn this to 700 days and I look at these charts and you, you, you can see a pretty good profile and there's two pretty typical ones. There's one that's just good right? It's most of the time they've been up. They've lived to the, the number and they've done a good job and they're just running their miner and they don't really, you know, let it go down. And then there's these units that just go offline all the time and they're up and down and, you know, they, they don't always get incentives. They missed out on rebates. They, you know, all kinds of that. And slowly but surely those have kind of fallen off the network. So what's left is really strong miners, really good miners. And if you're a really strong and good miner, um, you really have a fair number of tokens in place. And what this new UI is going to do is it's going to show all that stuff to you. So you can see in here now, we break it down by month. We have contracting, which is storage rent. We have incentives, which is, you know, historical. We've got the, 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 the data from history that we're going to roll into the miners themselves. We've got your rebates in there. So you'll be able to see it all here in one place. And then you can export it all to a CSV to hand over to the tax man. So um, that's a real, real gigantic feature of this UX that um, I think everybody is going to to see and, and it will really help us a lot. I wish we would have got it done a lot sooner. Um, it's unfortunate we didn't, but we didn't. Um, the other thing is, is you'll see the convert to storage credits button that won't be active right away, but um, we do have storage credits live in console. so. It's going to be a pretty quick dot upgrade to get storage credits baked into this. Um, what I'm going to tell you about that is, is that the next sort of natural evolution to this is, is this sort of thing. So we have one of our partners, uh, and we broke our partners up, by the way, into premier partners and general partners. Um, general are guys that are not doing anything yet, essentially. And pr the premier partners are guys that are billing. They're just booking. So um, you can tell they got the yellow colors and the, the, the generals or the greens. The greens will migrate and transition to yellow as soon as they start doing real work. Um, and that's just kind of a the thing. But in here, one of our partners went out and did kind of something we always thought was going to be the thing we were going to end up doing, which is he built some custom relayers slash examiners. And so that he could put those in his customers. And he's done pretty well with that. He's had a good job of it. So if you think it through, the next logical step is actually to build a relayer into the examiner, right? to just put a relayer right inside of this thing so that somebody who's got an examiner running who wants to upload a whole bunch of storage for personal use onto our network, they don't end up using their examiner like a NAS. What they do is they use their funds 
to go ahead and store directly on our network and then use storage credits to pay for it so that they don't have to actually pull out of pocket. I think that's going to be a pretty enormous thing because, you know, if there's 2,300 nodes out there that are operational and they all have the ability to run a very light relayer that can, you know, use the network, you'll see storage balloon up pretty quickly, right? Even if it's, you know, um, not really the the business we originally anticipated it will be business you know productive real business that that uh drives more value into these units for you guys so that's something that i suspect will come along this summer um okay and then you know over here some of these things that that have uh you know been out there have been really kind of uh, enhanced and upgraded for readability and legibility we still have the ability to talk to the explorer we still uh, have a contract explorer that you can pull up and look at individual contracts and, you know, export your uh, files and so forth so that you can keep them. Um, all of that stuff's pretty nice. We've got this new little status thing up in here, um, you know, a, a lot cleaner. And we moved all the stuff off the financials page that isn't directly related to financials, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff here that didn't really make sense on the main page. So then the transactions page is separated and so that'll you know grow to be really long um the settings now is changed a little bit there's a couple of things here i just want to highlight um so the deal is is that um you know uh this used to be what looked like alterable values but you couldn't really alter any of them right <laughs> it was weird um and so what we currently have right now is we have a storage price that's driven by supervisor. We have a collateral price, which is 1.5x of that storage price. And then ultimately, um, these are not modifiable. That's going to change. We are going to give you the ability to modify them. And there will be a button in here that you'll have to check. And that check button will be, I want push. In other words, I want supervisor to set all the stuff for me. Or I want pull, which is I'll set the stuff myself. And then if there's an update over time, I'll tell supervisor what I want to update and what I don't. Um, the one other thing that we're going to change quickly, probably by this release, um, is this download bandwidth price will be modifiable. Upload bandwidth price is the charge somebody has to pay to put stuff on your machine. You don't want to charge people money for that. You want them to be able to have a free, you know, frictionless upload. But download, a lot of people are going to end up running into caps and, and expensive ISPs. And so you're going to want to have the ability to set a, a download price. And then that will become kind of a market mechanism that we will build into relayers where we will start to take into consideration the costing that any individual Exa miner is putting out there. In other words, we will drive market uh, prices back into our mining, as we've always said we were going to, um, for storage. So that there can be this thing, if you're in a, you know, a heavily trafficked part of the world... Um, you have the ability to gain a, a little bit of an upper hand by cutting the, the prices that you charge for various things. So that'll be uh, driven in there. All this stuff in the summary now is in this screen. Um, it's got this interesting little, you know, um, deal where and I'm not going to I'm not going to do it. But uh, right. Well, I just did right there. <laughs> but um, anyway, the uh, uh, that's the settings page. Support page has been a, uh, a little cleaned up and now is uh, really nicely laid out. You can see your versions and statuses now real easily. You can contact support directly from here. You can uh, click on these to get uh, various, uh, you know, informational stuff about it. Um, Reannounce, download logs, re-download. Obviously, that's all been there before. And then, of course, your log viewer and so forth. Um, and there's still a few things uh, here that have to be done. Like you can see upload logs is not yet functional. He's got that done, but it's just a matter of getting the next version out there. And then now also what we've done is we've just iframed the documentation. So essentially people, you know, that own these units were always asking questions where we had to point them to the docs, but you know, why not just put the docs right in the unit? So you don't have to, you know, go anywhere. You can just stay in there and do it. And then of course, like I said, the stats page is changing. And in the stats page, uh, what you end up having is you end up having, holy cow, I've already got 83 megabytes. This network's cranking. Um, I just set this up this morning. I mean, literally two hours ago. I'll, I'll be rich by tomorrow. Um, you can see these categories are gone now, right? That the, the financial stuff is no longer here. The next big piece that we're gonna do on this is we're going to take this piece right here, the XMiner status piece, 
And there's about five or 10 different statuses that can come up when things are wrong. And what we're going to do is we're going to push those into a mode so that they can be consolized. One of the pieces that's not yet here in this version, it'll come out when we move up to like, uh, what, I don't remember what the version, I think this, well, I have the, the UI is 306 here, but um, the, the ne some next dot upgrade, so it'll be 3.1.0 probably, um, we will implement SSO into this unit, just the same as we have with the relayers, where you'll be able to log in with your username, and then you'll see your examiners in the console, like you can see your full licenses in the console. And you'll be able to access all of your stuff directly from the console via your SSO login. And then in that part, what ends up happening is then we'll be able to take these issues. And when we get an issue, we'll be able to go ahead and alert the email you have on file in console so that if the examiner experiences a problem, not just being offline or whatever, it will be able to chirp at you and say, oh, hey, you've got a problem here you need to look into. And then ultimately that will help to drive more stability and functionality in the network. Yeah, yeah, full licenses are the next things that are coming out. And, and as far as ARM devices go, we don't really have that original thing that we had about Pi. We don't mind Pi, but um, as far as UIs go, we do want people in the full license. And um, we do uh, want to show that we're going to continue to drive more and more functionality into this, that you're going to want to run this, right? Especially for things like financial record keeping and so forth. So that's kind of the deal. Oh, you know, this also brings up something else. Um, so we don't have this yet, but um, it's really trivially possible for us. I, I guess I don't want to say anything is, is trivially easy in development. But, um, you know, now that we have this running here and, and, and the web wallets turned out really good. And, and I think our devs that are working on it are just, you know, they're really pushing the envelope of what we can do here. This actually now has, you know, Solana integration built into it for Solana wallets, and you can get your uh, balances that you currently have on your Solana wallet and so forth. So that's kind of nice. Um, we can do a lot more with that. Um, but at the same time, one of the things that we ought to be able to do here is because if you come back to here, this is a wallet, right? I mean, this is a wallet. So there's no reason why we can't actually roll the web wallet into the XM user interface. So it's quite likely that what's going to happen is, is we're going to get another one of these uh, tabs up top, and that tab will be the wa web wallet. And then you'll be able to do your voting right from in here. You'll be able to, to send stuff back and forth from Solana. You know, well, not back and forth, but over to Solana from in here, and you'll be able to do, you know, a lot of operations of voting, all the stuff that, you know, right now you currently have to run this sort of separate standalone. Um, you should be able to do it in here. The reason why it's not trivial, and I, I shouldn't have said trivial because it's not, is that there's two different ways that these things access the daemon. This this runs a full copy of the daemon, whereas the web wallet is calling routines to call the daemon, and so it's a little different. Um, architecture. And so we have to figure out how we wrap that into uh, this environment. But you can see how it, it it all pulls together. You know, pretty soon it's all going to come down to one thing. And, and um, it's going to look a lot like this. Um, you know, what, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with a login to console. And in the console is going to be all of your assets, relayers and examiners and points and LP positions and everything that you're doing is going to show up here in the console. And then when you click on it, it'll show up in a window over here and you'll be able to run everything in your own world under this one, you know, banner. And that to me will be the, the, the finality and conclusion. And, you know, I want you to think about that for a second. What I just described is a full blown environment, much like anybody like Oracle or AWS or, you know, any of these people sort of have, and we're very close to it. I mean, it's not like we're, you know, miles and miles away. It's literally right around the corner for us. So again, I come back to the people that continue to say that if you don't get any storage, your coin has to be worthless. Um, and just say, you know what, that's just wrong. And you're going to learn that it's wrong here in the next six to nine months. Um, we've done so much work, so much work. And, um, you know, I'm starting to sound like Trump, aren't I? Very beautiful software, Be beautiful software. Anyway, 
Let me read the don'ts again. Yeah, the provider relay or NUC, it isn't a NUC. I actually have one in my basement, the one that we're, we're going to start with. Um, it's about six by eight by two. Um, it's got SFP networking. It's got uh, dual uh, Ethernet, uh, two and a half gig. It's got um, a lot of NVMe slots. It's got a 30,000 Passmark CPU. It's got up to 100 gig in memory. It, it is a cool little box, and the, the 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 way they ship them is just beautiful, and it's it it's really a powerful uh, little rig. So that's going to be that device that's going to ship first as the combined deal. What I'll say about that is this: um, we actually have one of our earlier developers back helping us again uh, a bit on the side, and he's working right now on the consensus algo update. But uh, Boris has also been working on. Post IO optimization, and I, I always remember the anecdote on this, and it's it's going to be one of those milestones that I never forget. Is um, you know back in the day when we were really trying to figure this all out, you know, I'm talking about 2019 and 2020. Um, you know, we were scratching our heads, doing a lot of whiteboarding, and trying to figure out how to do this right. And you know, came up with this idea called host IO, and you know, he wrote up a, a little engineering diagram on it, and 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 then ultimately, you know, he looked at it and he said, you know. I could probably just bang this out myself. So I'm going to just do this work instead of, you know, give it to an engine, uh, another dev and, you know, have somebody else code it. And I said, okay, cool. Well, how long do you think it's going to take? And, <laughs> you know, he goes like four days or something like that. And, and what ended up happening is, is host IO went on to become this giant engine um, that really solved most of the problems that Saya always had. Right. And, and it, it just is a world-class piece of software but it's never gotten full optimization, right? It, it, it does a great job. And, and you know, Pavel and, and everybody who's worked on it ever since, you know, they brought the thing way up the road and it is this really monstrous piece of software that does a lot of work. Um, but we know that we can do a lot more to make it run on less CPU. We can do a lot more to make it run on less memory. We can do a lot more to make it run on lower end networking. And ultimately, we can make light versions of it that take advantage of caching in, in ways that we don't currently take advantage of it. So, um, yes, today it does take a pretty hef hefty machine to, to do significant and serious work, but that's going to change over time. And, and so potentially in the future, yes, you'll be able to get even a, a very low end knock. Um, and run, you know, both the combos on there. Um, this current unit that I have in, in my basement is not all that expensive. For everything it has on it, he can get a cost on it that is really nice. And ultimately, it's going to end up becoming the flagship Examiner Relayer ship. I mean, it will be the thing that we'll sell the most of. And I expect that probably to happen in the, the later part of the summer, but you never know. We might get to it sooner. Um, it just really depends on how this whole mining thing plays out and how the markets and, and crypto works in general. Um, but in the end, I think you're going to see that new device and that new device is going to set a lot of people uh, into motion of wanting to join the network. All right, let me see what's going on. Nothing about Relayer because our devs haven't been working on Relayers at all. They've been focused entirely on um, this Examiner refactor um, and getting coins over to Solana. So that getting coins over to Solana was not a trivial exercise, by the way. Um, I think they did a phenomenal job, and it's it's been fantastic. Um, it, it it does highlight one thing though that you know you can't really fuck around with economics. You 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 you, you just can't. Um, what's going to end up happening is people are going to find the ways to, to do what they want to do. So, you know, right now, if you look at the transporter, you know, you got two individuals here who are competing to send over as much SPF as they potentially can. It's crazy. I mean, it's, 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 it's hard for me to look at that. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, this emission thing that we put in place is limiting it, but you know, in the end, they're going to get it over. They're going to get what they want. They're. They are going to do what they want to do. So, you know, we just have to kind of work around that. And I think the good news about this is, is that, um, yeah, okay, we tried this. It's not going to work. We're not going to be able to use D2X to, to self-fund the corporation. We, instead, what this shit ought to do with the mining and 
with the increase in uh, hash rate, with the uh, increase in visibility from the partner getting out there and, and talking to the world, um, with all of the various things that we're doing, um, I think that we will finally attract the funding that we never have been able to attract from, you know, more professional investors that will essentially come along and be able to help us to, to, to reach those heights that we need to reach. Because like this note, about you know we've how much we've accomplished with so few team members look that's cool i mean it's awesome i mean it is great and i'm so proud of the dudes that we currently have um involved we've have some bodies on the road by the way that that got left behind um which i'm not proud of and i i don't like and i hate that they they're not here and also at the same time I need about 4x that number of people and and not just because i have so much work to do um, and such a great grand vision to plug in and get out there and, and be on the street, but also because I'm not, you know, deaf to this. I, I, I fully get this. I, I've run companies, so um, I'm surprised that all the guys that are here are still here. You know, this has been really hard. <laughs> this has been really, really hard. And, you know, it's not the kind of stuff that, you know, people tend to stick around off often. You know, they get burnt out. They get hurt. They get you know, done. Um, but these guys are, 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 they're, 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 they're literally the Kansas city chiefs of, uh, of, uh, developers. <laughs> I guess today's the draft, right? That's, that's what we're talking about. They're not the Detroit lions. I'll tell you that. I don't know. I don't know who the Detroit lions are, but they aren't that good call today. I hope you guys are appreciative and, and, uh, positive about what's going on. A lot of great stuff is happening. A lot of great stuff has happened. A lot of stuff that we've been dreaming about for a long time is coming to fruition. We're starting to get some of the relationships and, and recognition, I think, now that we've deserved the whole time. And lastly, the thing I didn't say, actually, in that, that whole deal, and by the way, I, I do want to say this because I think it's really critical. Um, part of the reason why I think that our partner really glommed onto us isn't just because they're being, you know, mercenary and saying, oh, look, you know, here's a project that needs hash rate and POW, and we don't really give a, a, a darn about what they actually are doing. But that's not the case at all. We had a meeting with a higher up in management, and the higher up, you know, came out and said, look, one of the reasons why we chose this or why we decided to look at this is because you're in deep in, right? Deep in is going to be the hottest thing over the next year. And, and, um, the reason why that is, is because everybody saw what happened with helium at the end of the last cycle, right? Helium ran up to a million nodes, even though they didn't have, you know, uh, stuff to put on it. And by the way, to all you people who keep saying we have to have storage on the network, helium did a crazy moonshot in valuation, got a $200 million capital raise out of it and ended up going off and being able to develop, you know, mobile phones to being able to do all kinds of different things. Yeah, it's taking them time to get, you know, use on their ISP network, but they're getting it slow but sure. And ultimately, that will be the same thing that will happen to us as soon as we can go get enough community people to show up and say, man, I don't know what you guys are all thinking, but this coin price is whack. SCP transports are coming very soon. The, the, everything is in place for them, right? The, the, the transporters there, we just need to get the web wallet um, finished. And it just needs a little bit of work in order to be able to accommodate the, the SCP, the contract on the other side. Salon is done. So SCP transports are, are you know, teed up. They're, they're, they're just waiting. Um, I think what will end up happening is, is that they will go out in concert with this mining algo change um, to allow for there to be plenty of liquidity for, you know, SCP uh, that it gets mined, right? That, that people earn by doing mining. It, again, it's going to be a one-way transport um, where you earn it on this chip and then you send it over to that chain uh, for LP or uh, staking for um, putting into uh, sales, whatever you ultimately want to do. And by the way, um, we are going to introduce probably in the next quarter, maybe even sooner, but, but one of the next initiatives that will come up on that side is a standard liquid staking for both tokens because it's become really clear that LP is very hard for people and that's probably best left to the professionals. Um, but regular staking of tokens and locking tokens down is definitely something that we want to uh, drive into the project. And so liquid staking will show up here uh, pretty soon. And by the way, 
That's also one of the things that we're thinking about is it's potentially possible that in this consensus change that what we do is we reinstitute. So there, every block since day one has had a subsidy pulled out. Up, I think uh, block 109,000, I don't remember exactly the date on it, but at some date, it's it was up until then, it was a de dev fee and it came to us. And then we did unburn the dev fee at one point because we were broke, right? There's this amount that's pulled out and right now it's sent to a burn address. What we may do is unburn it permanently and leave it live and then have that 10% of every block reward go for uh, liquid staking yield. So that essentially it goes into a kitty, the kitty gets transported over to the mint uh, and then ultimately gets doled out to people that lock down SCP and lock down um, SPF, D2X over on the other chain. Um, they pick up this yield from that subsidy that's being printed off the blockchain. Um, so that's something that we're we're looking at and will probably be in the voting uh, of it. What I guess will likely happen is is we'll put the vote together and say, do we want to unburn uh, the 10% going forward, yes or no? And, and if we do unburn it, it will be uh, targeted towards uh, a yield collection facility and, and payout to, to people that own the tokens. Because it's it's useful to be able to earn money on holding these coins for a long period of time for you. So there you go. Uh, how does SCP on Solana help the project? I mean, A, if we're going over there, it's the first migration and getting people familiar with Solana and getting uh, to understand how Solana works and how uh, that all happens. But B, the, the, the notion of um, us not being able to get onto any significant large sized I always say DEX and checks, right? DEX for decentralized exchange and checks for centralized exchange. We we've not had any success with checks. We've we've had really bad luck with checks. We got rugged by Crypto Bridge. We had problems with Whitebit and Probit. We uh, got you know evicted from South Exchange when they walked, and now we're on one small. Uh, check and and the deal is is if we want to get onto like MEXC, you know, I've got a number. It's like seventy, eighty thousand dollars all in. You get some of it back. You have to use some of it for market making. You have to use some of it for marketing. Um, if I had seventy, eighty thousand dollars, I got to use that for a couple of months of developer run rate. I I just don't have the ability to do anything. If we had gotten VCs early on, then we'd be on Binance and we'd be where we needed to be there. And then this question wouldn't be a question. The only way I can see to get us into the deal flow of real heavy liquidity so that people can buy and sell large quantities of tokens on our chain once we get a major manufacturing partner back behind us and once we get a lot more knowledge about our project and people are interested and we start zooming up the charts um, is to be on DEX because it's the only way I can do it without having to spend an arm and a leg to get there. Our strategy right now is get on to DEX first, get DEX liquidity, get growth, get you know people able to buy and sell significant quantities of the tokens, and then take those numbers to people like Coinbase or whoever, and then translate them into a checks listing after that, if it turns out that that's what people really want and need. I'm not convinced, by the way. I, I, I think checks is going away. I, I know a lot of people disagree, but but um, Coinbase Wallet, I think, is a, a big milestone because I think these people recognize that custodying people's assets and using databases to provide order books is not the world. That's not the world that we should be in. That's the world where individuals like SPF get to go and take all your money and gamble with it, and you don't get to control it. DEX changes all that. And DEX can be order books, right? That you've got uh, Serum, which was now called Open Book, I think, on Solana, um, which is a standard order book, right? So um, I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a few people crop up that take the charge on uh, building check style interfaces for decks so that you always maintain control, not your keys, not your coins. That goes away, and that's where we go. Anyway, okay, there it is. April storage provider call. Um, I think this was a good one. And I think that you're going to start to see a lot of this stuff coming together in ways that you maybe didn't expect. But ultimately, here's the real, I think, most interesting part of this. We sent out 4,700 emails um, to our community um, 
you know, in the last couple of blasts that we did. This last blast that we sent out talked about all this stuff, plus a few more things. The X and S promotions, for instance. And of those 4,700, about 290 clicks, I think, click-throughs came off of those emails. We did the vote uh, for the SCP transport. And out of that, I think we ended up with just over 200 votes when it was all said and done. And on any given day, there's about 200 people that are hanging out in the Discord watching it. And of the 200, there's about 20 that post regularly. And of the 20, there's about two that um, everybody just, you know, sees all the time. Um, that That's, you know, I don't know what that is. That's partly, you know, I've given up on crypto until it turns to the highs again. It's whatever it is. But we've got to get that 4,000 back interested. And we've got to get them because we got 2,200 nodes on the network. So they're still here. <laughs> they're just not, they just don't care, right? They're just not paying attention right now. They don't, they're not... Talk to them when the coin price is three dollars is is my guess, or you know when something is is of interest you know to them, but that's coming. And the last thing I'll say is that it's not coming in the next thirty days. Anybody who seems to think that Bitcoin is just going to run right up to the at the high because we're early, you're just wrong. you You need to prepare for a long grinding summer, and then ultimately you're going to start to see the fireworks and that's how they get people to part with their coins by the way they they grind people down over these periods when people are getting most excited and then that's when they take the coins away from you so don't don't let that happen stick around make sure you're here for the run up when it comes don't let people fear you out of your stuff um you know don't sell this and go buy miladies cuz that's just stupid um but you know there you go and it is financial advice. No, 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 it's not financial advice. <laughs> not at all. All right. Have a good one. And uh, we'll see you again in 30 days. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending.